number one, who are Okay, good. reporting in progress. All right, well then I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, this is officially, can I turn this off? Continue. I've got this, uh, I'll just get rid of it on my screen. It says we're recording. Um, we're not, are we missing anybody? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, we're all here. All right, um, welcome everyone and to the public that's here. Uh, this is the Historic Preservation Architectural Review Commission, Thursday, June 3rd, 6 o'clock, Zoom public hearing. Um, so they're officially calling this to order. I was, I'm going to introduce Carolyn Jones, even though she's not here. She is the recently elected to city council and she is going to be um, our ex officio member of city council to H Park, replacing Bonnie, which uh, for anybody who's met her, and I've met her, I've talked to her a couple times about H Park. Um, and I think she's going to be excellent and, and um, provide the same kind of support um, that Bonnie was able to do, which is really good. Um, we just have one application for this public hearing. It's discussion and hearing on a request by Merle and Susan Johnson for the demolition removal of an existing accessory structure for the construction of a new accessory structure. The property is located at 113 Dewey Avenue, plus the county tax map 335-8.11-129.00RH contributing. Um, so um, the procedure is that this is just a public hearing for this request. Um, I'll ask them to present again uh, this request and then we'll have questions or discussions by the commissioners and also open it to the public. But we will not vote until we go into our regular meeting. So that's just a reminder. Um, are the... Um, the Johnsons here to present. Oh yes, there they are. I see you. Uh, you need to unmute. Oh, great. Hey. Very good. Yeah. Welcome. I've been Welcome. vaccinated. You have? Okay. <laughs> well, it's okay. As long as we're Zoom. <laughs> but um, you know, that's that's good. That's that's a good sign. Yeah, you know, we should do some kind of get a percentage of all of Lewis. I think we could do do pretty well. Um, <laughs> So back to your presentation, would you like to run through again for the public hearing sure. um, what your request is and why? So the request is to demolition a older shed that uh, is starting to fall down and remove a plastic shed and replace it with a, another shed. And the, the, both the new shed will be completely behind the existing house. So will essentially not be visible from the street. So the reason is I would like a bigger shed and a workshop. And the other one is very much starting to fail. As you guys have seen on the application, I took a picture of it with a level next to it and it's leaning backwards at a you know, fairly significant angle with uh, termite damage at the foundation. The other thing that is part of the application is the desire to build a uh, carport and put some pavers down uh, as a place to store a Bambi Airstream to the right of my house, which will be visible by from the street, but mostly covered with an existing fence. And because of the angle of the carport, you would only see it from the front elevation, which would also shield it uh, to some degree from the street. So that's the application. Uh, you guys have a lot of paperwork on it. I've updated a few things. You'll see that I've, I've redesigned the carport, hopefully more to your liking, uh, but I'm open to suggestions on that. And I've removed the uh, windows that uh, uh, nobody liked in the, in the uh, shed. Mm -hmm. I also got some better drawings from the, uh, the uh, shed manufacturer. And I had a friend of mine who is a architect up uh, in my previous historic town, Brookville, Maryland, uh, like a fellow by the name Mish Bose uh, to sketch up uh, the carport. They're, they're fairly minimal, but there's not a lot to see on it. I mean, I, I think they illustrate what you'll need to know. If, uh, if you have any more questions on it, I can certainly get more drawings. 
Well, we'll get into that when we go into our regular meeting. This is just a short meeting um, uh, as, a, as a public hearing because you're requesting a demolition of a contributing structure um, that is, um, you know, uh, part of the procedures that we go through. Um, do any of the uh, commissioners have any questions? Um, yes. yes. Yeah. Joe? Yeah. yeah. Uh, bas <laughs> basically, I'm wondering, will you be, your car and your trailer, will you be backing we're, in? We're, wait, 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 Joe. We're only talking about the demolition request right now. Okay, all right. We're going to do the, we're going to do the other when we get into our regular meeting. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. Does anybody have any comments to make about the contributing structure that they're requesting to demolish? No. Yes, I do. I do. I would like to. I, you know, I know it's it's a shed, and it's and it has uh, and it has uh, rot in it, and and the foundation is in poor condition. But I look at the photograph that you submitted with the application, the blue the blue shed, and I look at it and I think. I wish we. I wish there was a way to save it. Um, you know, I do know that you can jack it up and, and fix the foundation. And I would really like you because it's historic and it and it is. It does have its own character that belongs in the historic district. I would like to see if you if you could look investigate a little further or some way to save this building and not tear it down. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone else want to make a comment? Madam Chair? Yes, Landon. It's Bill, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with uh, Phil. You know, I actually uh, went out physically and saw the shed, uh, went to the back and looked at it. And you know, I just restored a barn on the outskirts of Lewis where I had no back wall. And I had to completely put three by fours in to frame it before I could even lift it. But you know that building was much much larger than this. And I'm looking at that, and I, I really think this could be restored uh, without much difficulty. I have no problem with that plastic shed there that that can come out of there. But that that contributing structure, uh, yeah, that that could be strengthened and lift lifted and uh, a good foundation put under that. And I think it's a charming little uh, outbuilding and a treasure to Lewis, uh, as far as from a historical standpoint, it's also a very attractive building. It doesn't take up a lot of space. It's not very large, but it, 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 uh, it brings us back to the past and the way things, uh, the way people built things. I mean, those two doors on a little shed like that, I mean, it's just abs absolutely uh, charming. So I would say we should, we should go to all measure to restore that building and keep it and not, not demolish it. So um, anyone else have anything to say? Um, I'd just like to ask uh, Mr. Johnson um, if he has uh, in any way considered uh, the possibility of saving the structure or what, uh, if not, you know, it, what, what's the motivation to not do that? Okay. So um, frankly, it doesn't fit my needs. I, I have uh, some. I have some very large kayaks. Uh, you've probably seen me paddling up and down the canal. So I've got twenty foot kayaks and four of them, and I have motorcycles. And I'm very involved in bicycle racing. And my goal is to have safe storage for all of those. So that shed does not fit any of those needs. Uh, I'm also would be very reluctant just putting any money into that shed. I don't know if that's something that you guys can require me to do, but uh, the thought of me putting thousands of dollars into lift that shed up and rebuild it that, you know, unless, unless I'm forced to, that's not something I'd be interested in doing in the least that primarily because it doesn't fit my needs. Oh, well that, yeah, that's what I was looking for. I, I believe the answer is no, you can't be forced. So mm -hmm. unless you, go through a condemnation and I don't think that's going to happen uh, for a show. So. Yeah. And then the other, the, the final point, uh, and you know, I'm not unsympathetic to historical 
desires. Uh, I, I've lived in historical towns my entire life. Previous town I lived in was in Brookville, Maryland, which is uh, where we were capital for the day in the War of 1812 when Madison fled. I lived across the street from that. So I'm sympathetic to it. But this is a shed that's, in, in, unless you come into my backyard, you can't see it. I mean, this is not bringing value to the town for anybody that's walking up and down the street because it's it's not visible from the street. So. Okay, um, Michael, any comment from you? Yeah, I mean, well, uh, sort of based on the, the uh, criteria and based upon the submission of the materials that Mr. Johnson put forward, um, my concern would be um, the impact that it would have on the health by the current structure right now, just in terms of the impact that it has on the health and safety of the city. I mean, it looks like there is significant termite damage. Um, it also, uh, I think there was reference made to the, the flooring itself being um, not so stable. Um, and I would just, I would be concerned, or I am concerned, um, uh, whether you know it would even be feasible to uh, restore um, this shed that's not necessarily in public view, um, given its current uh, structural integrity. Well, from what Bill said, and I've experienced working on structures that you don't really even wanna walk into, but the owners wanted to save them, it, it is doable. You just have to want to do it, um, and it's uh, and it's you know our, our charge is preservation, and so we do are we required to explore every possibility to do that. So I think that's what we're doing. <laughs> um, yeah. Did, so everybody has had a chance to speak, right? I I have not. Oh, oh Joe, I'm sorry. I, well, I, Randy's next, but uh, looking at the condition, I, I think it's a dangerous piece of architecture, if you can call it that. And uh, I would not be in favor of saving it. I think it's past its prime. And it may even blow down tonight, nor thunderstorm. Who knows? You know, it could go at any time. But that's my opinion. Well, yours, Randy. Randy, did you want to make a comment? Yes. Um, I, you know, when I... When I look at this in the whole and I look at uh, the renovations and restorations, I mean, you know, if, if this was a shed that was sitting that had been built in 17 or 1820 and it was visible from the street and we had uh, some sort of continued historic significance on the existing house on the front of the property that needed to be restored or that there was a restoration possible, I think it's a different situation. But this house has been modernized on the outside using modern materials. Uh, the, the shed offers no historic significance. It was probably built in the 20s, not in the, you know, maybe even in the 30s or 40s. Did you read, um, did you read the, uh, the description of it? I, I read the contributing information about the overall property. Um, yes, I did. Okay, because they had to write up for just the shed. I, if I can chime in, I, I know, being a home inspector, I do know a little bit about the ages of things. It is all milled lumber. Um, it's it's old growth lumber. It is hard lumber, but it's milled, so it's, it's not hand-hewn, so it's I would guesstimate 20s or 30s was the build date. It, it's also a, a type of bead and board uh, siding on the inside that also leads me to believe 20s or 30s was the build date. Well, that could have been added later, though. Could have been. Yeah. I mean, the, the roof rafters and the uh, framing is milled lumber. It's, it's not hand hewn. So you, you have it, it came from a sawmill. Barbara, I have a question for Robin, and it may be a uh, silly question, I don't know. No question um, for silly. But if the house were in the condition 
that the shed is in, would the house be condemned? Well, it probably takes, a, again, it, just in general terms, there's a, there's a, I don't want to say a big difference between the house and the shed, you know, for what's in it and all that stuff. So, wow. I mean, it, it is, the, the bottom portion of it is in disrepair, yes. Um, I, at one time, several months ago, peeked in there, I did not physically walk inside the whole building and check it out. But the bottom is rotted out, yeah, from the inside. There is termite damage, as Mr. Johnson has noted. So uh, if this were the if this were the dwelling rather than the shed, and I I do know the difference, uh, the the uh, house would probably be condemned. I, I I don't think you can assume that because we have had public hearings for other houses that um, were claimed perhaps not this bad, but uh, required a lot of rehabbing and expense and. Um, they were not, they did not get approval to, for demolition. So I, I don't think you can, you, you can't really make that assumption. You know, the value in okay. a historic building hasn't, is, is way beyond its current condition. You know, as Bill had, um, as Landon had talked about, the, you know, a barn that he's rehabbing that doesn't have a back wall. So, you know, I, I, you know, that's, I think we have to go, we have to use other criteria than that. We don't have anything really detailed in our guidelines about demolition to be approved based on condition. You know, I think yeah, but, but one of the things that is absolutely in our uh, guidelines is the visibility of the work that's being done. Correct. And we made our guidelines such that you can uh, put non-historic products on portions of the house uh, and not be required to even even do the restoration that I mean so I think it's a little penal of us to attempt to uh, reinterpret our own mission which is maintain the character I mean we're looking to maintain character but you can't see the building. Being well, if you look at the uh, uh, picture that says right side, and you look at that, I think it's, um, you can see the roof and you can see part of it. Uh, let me see, I'll tell you how many slides in. One, two, three, fourth one in says upper, a picture says right side. Take a look at the shed there. You can see that from the street. See the roof and part of it? That you can see part of it through the lattice there because you can't go any higher that so you put lattice there. But you can see it there. I sure see it. And my eyes aren't 2020 anymore. Well, I, I think the I think the really important thing is that we have to, you know, the purpose um, we have. You know, our charge is really preservation when at all possible. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're exploring, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, you know, and, and we have a whole page of why we do that in our, on the first page of, of chapter 197 zoning, article six, 197.56 purpose establishes composition meetings and definitions. And we talk about promoting and preserving the values of the city of Lewis, preserving the historic character and the fabric, recommend rehabilitation rather than demolition of contributing structures or historic properties, encourage the proper maintenance, preservation, and when necessary, alterations of structures in the historic district. I mean, we, we need to explore this as part of our charge, mm -hmm. which is what we're doing right now. Um, Barbara, I have another question. I'm sorry. Yes, that's um, okay. Uh, Mr. That's Johnson, okay. It, is it impossible at all to move the shed onto another part of the property? Mm -hmm. uh, and, well, and anything's preserve. possible. And yeah. that could be a long-term project. It's certainly possible. I, you know, the expense to me would be uh, far away the benefit, to be honest with you. Uh, but yeah, I mean, anything's possible. We, it could be picked up. 
a new foundation built and relocated to another section of the property, something I'm not really interested or inclined to do, but I, yes, it is, to answer your question, it's absolutely, and you know, anything's possible. It's just how big a check are you willing to write? Well, yeah, exactly. Um, but I want to, I guess uh, my question is to the rest of the commission is, is that a, a compromise um, in any way? Um, and there again, you know, that this, this could be a long-term project so that you, you know, Mr. Johnson, you wouldn't have a whole lot of expense going out at once. Um, you know, I'm just trying to see, because quite honestly, I'm torn. I, I really am. Uh, Barbara is 100% right uh, about our ch charge and our charge of preservation. Uh, the flip side of it is uh, perhaps the realtor and me, I understand that a, a, a property has to be functional for its own. Um, so uh, this is a little bit of a tough one. So I'm hoping that maybe we could find some kind of compromise. Well, I, I think, you, you know, Robin, I'm not sure, but I think we can continue this conversation prior to voting when we go into our regular meeting. Is that correct? Well, yeah, this, this is only the public hearing portion. So, you know, again, there is a little bit of discussion, but uh, I think the main part of any type of discussion on this application needs to be done at the meeting end of this. Okay. So uh, what? Did... That being said, I do not see any attendees. Oh, really? Um, I see. I see two. Uh, well, uh, Jackie's one of them, and she's transcribing the minutes. And the other is Councilman Williams. Uh, uh, okay. He, he attends, Interesting. And, um, Madam Chair. He... What yep. may what, a, a section of your code that may be of interest in, in relation to that point is found in 19758 under subpart I, which is demolition and removal. And it talks about how each park may delay its final decision uh, with regard to demolition or removal for an additional 60 days uh, and, yes. and so on and so I forth, so long as it's rendered no later than 120 days after the initial application. So you know, it, there there are grounds for for you guys to you know get additional information. Uh, I will say that the additional sixty days will need to be in relation to obtaining a opinion from a licensed professional engineer. Uh, that would be H Park obtaining that, not not the applicant. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, but but we're not we're not going to come up with a solution or a vote at this meeting. This is just to have a public hearing to satisfy our requirements. And if there's no, no one else that cares to speak, and Robin said there's no one out there. Yeah, it doesn't um, appear to be anyone, any attendees. Nobody's got their hand raised, nothing in the okay. chat. Okay. Um, All right, then, then um, Robin, do you agree I sh we should adjourn this meeting. I would say if no one has we need to continue the public hearing at this point. Let me just move into the meeting. We need to right. So we we'll close this meeting, correct? Yes, I would close the public hearing and then reopen the regularly scheduled meeting. Okay. So if there's no other comments from anyone and the public, um, consider this meeting adjourned. Okay. Now and, we're gonna give Madam Chair, yeah, yes. uh, just like you were going to say, I need to stop the recording. Yep. So we're going to take like a 30 second pause.